Pumpkins and uh, squashes, both summer and winter squashes, are among the wi most widely cultivated crops in homes, in allotments, and in gardens. And uh, people like to know about them. People love them. I love them. Many people also share the same interest. The varieties getting gradually diversified you can have more than what was routinely available in the shops or in the seed catalogs but as you know I like books I like information which is specifically go into depth about one subject I'm fed up with the kind of general gardening or allotment books that they cover all the topics very vast sea of knowledge little depth and by people who actually have not done the cultivation themselves you see the picture of the hand of a young lady when the, actually the author is not is not the same person. Uh, posh gardeners who don't do the gardening themselves and but write about it. Gardeners or allotmenteers who claim that they are the fastest growing web or YouTube or whatever in the Europe or the world or universe or cosmos. But they hate vegetables. You don't see they cultivate much. Or you don't see they harvest anything. You never see them actually cooking it. So, the best way is always to go for the masters in this, in any field. And the masters in this field are those who have written comprehensive books about pumpkins and squashes. I have a few books here which are just about the pumpkins and the squashes. The topmost of them is the complete squash. is by Amy Goldman. This book is published in the United States. I must say that before anything else. The, in the English-speaking world, uh, the best books on pumpkins are written by the Americans. Simply because they have more varieties, pumpkins and squashes, many of them are from the North America and South America. They have bigger lands, uh, uh, all the traditions of the, for example, pumpkin for Halloween and other things, it seems comes, originates from the, from the America, from the early settlers who went there. That was a staple food for them. Uh, there is a prayer, actually, they say that, uh, God, uh, give me one food which has no pumpkin in it. It was during those times that they had only pumpkin available. They learned it from the Native Americans and uh, the original nation. And uh, the, this was a crop that they, everybody had to uh, eat. There was, there was not much more available. Uh, okay, now the Americans know a lot about pumpkins and the best books, of course, written by them in this field. And Complete Squash, which I will go later for a better review of this, comprehensive review of this, is the best book you can get on the subject. And the good news is that many of the pumpkins and squashes described in this book, you can buy it actually, the seeds of them are available in a very uh, comprehensive website, American website. If you're in the UK, you can get five seed packs from them at each time it seems there's a rule for that 
uh, is import rule. And uh, this uh, about uh, about a few seed packs from the, from that supplier, which actually seems is uh, has most of the pumpkins and squashes mentioned here. That's Baker Creek uh, Heirloom Seed Company. This is American company, of course. And then this book, if you get a copy of it, I don't think anybody sells that. Is not available second hand. Second hand sometimes is more expensive than the new one. Try it, you will see that. Uh, the cheapest you will ever get is about forty pound or six, uh, fifty pound. If you are lucky, I don't. I don't think you will be lucky to get a fifty pound or six, uh, forty pound version of this. But if you are lucky, <laughs> good luck. Usually it is on sale for seventy pound or more, about one hundred dollars. Nobody sells this book because it's such a good book, such a comprehensive book. There is no pumpkin available to us that this book has not mentioned it. And I'm saying it because I have I've looked at many of them. I've grown a few of them. Amy Goldman has done a good job, especially with conjunction with the photographer. Look, they have taken a very beautiful artistic photograph uh, all through the books. They have a very lovely se section for the uh for recipes to what to do with your harvest of pumpkin and summer and winter squashes and uh yeah what 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 can i say about this book you must love pumpkins to understand what i mean for example i have i've grown this variety and i have bought uh and learned about this from this book and then I bought it from the heirloom, uh, the Baker's Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company in America, in America also. And uh, yeah, that that is claimed to be the most beautiful pumpkin in the world. I've made a, a, several videos about it. The latest one you can see also in the probably under this video and uh, before this video, the last one. This is a very good book. Buy it if you can afford it. Don't expect to buy a cheap one because there is not nobody sells this book at least for now. The book has a the content of the book as you see here. I will have a separate video about this. This book really deserves a separate entry on its own. And uh, yeah. Next to the best is the perfect pumpkin. Again, is an American book by Gail Damero. Uh, I told you this this is the it's full of stories and the anecdotes about the uh, how the pumpkin was uh, uh, developed and used in America, cultivation, all the varieties, all the tricks of the trade, everything mentioned. Is, is in America, you can buy it by for about fifteen pound, fifteen dollar. Uh, I've not seen it in the UK. If you if you can find second hand copy, probably about ten pound or so, uh, you can you can buy it in the UK. Or you can get it from the library, just read. Uh, this book is not in pictures. Of course, it doesn't need it, seems, because it's packed with information. If you want something about pumpkins with varieties, this is the book to go, complete squash. But if you want to have the knowledge about the pumpkins and what to do with that pumpkin that you have, growing, cooking, and carving about it, and also stories about pumpkins. Perfect Pumpkin is the book to go for. There are several other books here in the UK, we have it. Uh, these two books, Growing Squashes and Pumpkin and How to Grow Squashes and Pumpkins, they are basically the same book. I was tricked to buy both of them, thinking that they are different. They are not. Richard Bird, Richard Bird, same number of the pages, same photographs, everything is the same. Not bad book, but not in depth. Uh, too much shallow, I think, is a little bit too much like a Dorling Industry books. Um, not much about the varieties of a pumpkin, which is what we want to know. And uh, if you buy either of them, you will you have you have read the other one as if you have already the other one. I cannot say the same about this book, Pumpkins and Squashes Gardening and. Crafts and Recipes by Caroline Boise. Uh, I keep things in between the pages. This is a Reader's Digest uh, book, of course. It was published in the 
Seems it's post published in the UK. Let me see. Limited. Yeah, okay. It's given the thing in the Library of Congress, so it must be American again. Not surprisingly. This is a good book. I'm telling you, this is a good book. Full of recipes. Uh, good varieties, good pictures, how to carve the pumpkin, how to decorate it. I'm not interested in that, but if anybody is interested, that's the way. And uh, some, not very extensive, but some, some entries for about different varieties of pumpkins. I think that comes at the end. Yeah. Not bad. Actually, this is good. These entries are good. This, uh, it gives you something about the pumpkins. I've grown some of these, and I can say that uh, some of them are really good. For example, surprisingly, from this book, <laughs> Complete Pumpkin, about two, uh, two varieties of seeds of pumpkins, one from uh, the one uh, Iran, and the other one was uh, uh, Kadupolo from Tajikistan, the country of Tajikistan, uh, in Central Asia. And I bought a few French and Greek ones also. The French and Greek ones either failed to give anything or when the crop was available, uh, it just rotted easily. It didn't survive the British harsh weather. Wet and damp and cold can be everything. <laughs> but surprisingly, those, uh, uh, varieties, those two varieties, Iran and Kadupolo from Tajikistan, they survived the British weather. I have them, and uh, actually I made a video about Iran. The other one is uh, is in my car, and I have to go and uh, bring it and just uh, eat it. The uh, Kedipolo version. So anyway, I'm di digressing. These are the books that you you can you can buy. You can uh, of course borrow from a library. This the last one that I mentioned. Uh, the price of it, the pumpkins and squashes, gardening crops and recipes. There is no price tag on it. I don't know where it is. It must have a dust jacket. I don't know where is the dust jacket. I probably removed it or put it somewhere. Uh, anyway. There is a price somewhere, is it? No. Anyway, uh, should be around 15, 10 pound or something like that. Okay, uh, which ones I recommend? I recommend this pumpkin and squashes, perfect pumpkin, and above all, the complete squash. These two books by Richard Baird, practically, uh, uh, if you get them very cheap, buy them, otherwise don't bother. I don't trust this people person who has written the same book and published it under two different names by two different uh, publishers. Yeah, two different publishers. This one six ninety nine by which company? Southwater. The same book. Six ninety nine by Lorenz book. Okay, you can say that the uh, the publisher he, he he gave it to the second publisher after the first publisher sold out all the copies. You can investigate that for yourself. You see here, the dates here is written. This was published in 2008, 2003 and 2008. And Mr. Richard Bird sold this book again to another company. Uh -huh. If I can find here, 2003. Okay, we can say that he was selling the same book in 2003 to two different companies. Or the publisher was selling it to the different, or distributor, or whatever. Very strange. Same book, same author, two different names, whatever. You can make your mind about it. If I wanted to go for a book, complete squash, perfect pumpkin, pumpkin and squashes, these three. I will not go for these two.
Okay. This is my uh, three sister system for 2015, starting to put the laying down the irrigation system of it. These are practically pipes that I have made holes in them, then joining them with the duct tape. Uh, it doesn't matter if this is not really completely sealed because that actually serves my purpose. I want the irrigation, some water leaking <laughs> will be nice in a way, actually. <laughs> so, uh, about a foot of the trunk, just join, join them, cutting at, at an angle, then joining them. By this duct tape again, it, leaking is not a big problem here. So, I put also one of those bottles, half bottle cut at that. And then, that's it if we're ready. I dig them, of course, into the ground bury them. So in this way the plants, the roots of them will receive the water and uh, the soil will remain dry practically. Uh, slugs and uh, other pests will be discouraged. At the same time the weeds will be also discouraged so we will not have such problems. And uh, yeah, 2015 three, three system, three sister system. I mean uh, of course you know what it is. Three, three sister system is a uh, planting um, sweet corn uh, along sweet corn will provide the uh, as they say it's original uh, American native Native Americans uh, system uh, sweet corn will provide the uh, um, stock for the beans uh, runner beans or any French bean or anything any beans uh, to climb on at the same time the canopy of the pumpkins and the squashes and the uh, courgettes will uh, suppress the weeds because it gives them a shadow, provides a shadow, and then that's called three sister system. I do sometimes add a, another sister to that called the uh, um, sunflower. Sunflower I will add also. Last year I added it was really beautiful, and uh, yeah, we will see how it is. So practically I will irrigate all the uh, all the soil underwater, hopefully. Uh, here and there just remains something. I may add a few bits here, just a pipe to here, just a pipe to there. I may not even bother for that because practically they will receive the water. The roots will go really far. They easily can get it. The underlying structure of the soil will be moist, so the roots will search for that water definitely. So that is 2012, 2015. <laughs> uh, Three-sister system irrigation. Okay, three sister system is now under construction in this beautiful sunset. As you see, I'm spreading uh, two inches of the compost that I'm extracting from my own compost heap. Uh, I just sieve them. That's the plastics and the bindweed. Surprisingly, they are similar together. <laughs> they go to the same. And uh, yeah, that's the three sisters. I may add some of these uh, wig vamps. Instead of one, I put two between these others. So, modifications gradually. We will see how it is going. Okay, this is the three sister system for this year. And because I have now put two inches of the compost here, it's ready, the bed is ready. It was last year my potato bed. Um, this year I've decided to also not only use the beans <coughs> on the big wig vams, this year probably I will try some peas also. I will put a network of uh, strings around here. So in total I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten wig vams here. So uh, this will be the, for the runner beans, uh, French climbing beans, which I bought from the real seed catalog. Uh, the, some of the tall, uh, also tall peas, which I bought again from seed, uh, real seed catalog. And they are ready almost. So <clears throat> in the middle I will put the sweet corns and the courgettes and the pumpkins. And also in the between also. So, God willing, we will have a crop of three systems. 
I have some uh, uh, sunflowers, also seedlings ready, so I can plant them also. So we will have a good, beautiful area with some crop we can use or eat. Uh, we can eat and give it to our friends also. So that will be for 2015 that we need. <laughs> That's the way it is now. The tracks you see on the screen are midgets. Beautiful sky, one day after storm. Okay, uh, this is the way I do my wig vamps. Uh, being interested in science and uh, yeah, living on it. Uh, what I am doing is creating a kind of a spiral shaped by the twine, uh, like a DNA molecule, the structure, the model of a DNA. So I start, I have six poles, I start tying it uh, twine to one side, gradually spiraling up, then starting from the uh, third one again, first one tied, second one left on its own, uh, third one tied again, a twine, and then spiraling upward, then starting from the, uh, yeah, that's the fifth one, I start again, and the twine coming up. That's the resulting structure. And uh, that will be for my climbing being, runner beans, and uh, hopefully this year I will start to do it for the, the tall peas. I don't like dwarfing peas anymore. I'm fed up with them. They're too fiddly. The crop is not uh, big enough. Uh, I want tall variety, old heirloom varieties. So I got it from the seed catalog, uh, real seed catalog. So the last year I got it. And it was a little bit too late for that. So this year I'm starting hopefully at the right time of the year. And looking forward to tall peas on the big man. That's the experience on its own. Uh, experiment. So that's it. Uh, three sister system with 10 wigwams and the center will be uh, sweet peas and uh, sweet corns and uh, yeah the courgettes and the pumpkins. Courgette will be at the margin and the pumpkins will be at the middle that they don't need any fiddling with but courgette needs to be harvested so I have to put them in the margins between the wigwams. So I will have uh, some space for doing this. And that's what is going to be done in this beautiful, lovely day of God. Oh, look at that. And the garden is shining. Look at that orchard. And the happy polytunnel. Thanks God. Okay, the the wigwams or probably tepees. Am I right? Call them tepees. Are done anyway. And I um, mean the strings and everything. I put them here. And I've put the first batch of the tall peas here. These are the ones that I bought from the um, yeah, the real seed catalog. Not the ones I filmed them last night. These are from the previous batch I had. And uh, there will be more planted. Then I will also do another. Probably I will do three or four of this week time just for peas. And uh, yeah, this is the way I've done it. So when the climbing being or the runner being comes, they just can cling to this, go up, and grow. Let me see how the chickens are doing. That's Silvi. Silvi was broody, now she's out. Amazing. One, two, three, four, where is Jane? Oh, Jane probably is laying. Ah, yeah. I think Jane, the white light Sussex, is, is laying. I'm looking forward to that egg. Okay, I have received my uh, package of seeds. The last package of seed probably for this growing season. And 
Yeah. I bought from the... This is... I ordered them from the company called uh, the Real Seed Catalog. This is a British company and uh, they supply some of the best uh, heirloom um, seeds available in the Britain, in England. And uh, I don't like to grow seeds which actually uh, are not heirloom. I grow sometimes some seeds, for example, Sun Gold F1. That is hybrid, but I don't like genetically modified and known heirloom seeds because I don't trust those things. And also these are natural. Our bodies are, have been adapted to them. We have probably many of them over many generations have been modified and uh, they have been uh, modified to our taste and to our digestive system. So um, I have a set of the seeds now here and I will go through them. Um, one of the seeds that I always liked and I've grown it already is a kind of winter squash called Mosquito Province. It's one of the most beautiful, long-keeping and sweet kind of um, um, yeah, winter squash pumpkin. And uh, I've grown it, it's really beautiful when it is green. Then uh, gradually over the storage it turns uh, kind of light brown. Another one, uh, this is the Blue Hungarian. It's kind of a metallic greenish, uh, pale green. And uh, medium size, not very big, not very small winter squash. Uh, the, the flesh is, of course, orange and it's beautiful. I like it. I've grown it already once. And another variety which I'm doing first year is Boston uh, winter squash. I suppose this is from the uh, one of those varieties that uh, is from Americas. And uh, yeah. And uh, it, it, as it's called Boston, I don't know anything to do with the city of Boston in the United States of America, but uh, that's the seat that we have. If anybody knows about this, please can you tell me? Uh, it's, it's, it seems, as they say, it's a rich, prolific plant. It gives a lot of uh, good winter squashes. And I, I love winter squashes. I'm crazy for it. That is another, I think that is another American one, Thelma Sanders sweet potato. I've grown it once the, the, the previous year. The most beautiful uh, small winter squash that you can find. I like the look of it. It's so well keeping. I gave a lot of it to my friends as a gift. They loved it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's delicious. I recommend if anybody wants to grow uh, butternut squash. Don't bother with the butternut squash. Is it's not really a good, easy to grow, and the taste is not good. Telma Sanders sweet potato is not a sweet potato. It's a winter squash. It's the same size almost. It's more delicious. It is a long keeper, and it is ornamentally fabulously beautiful. I like that. I'm growing it again. It was, it was not possible. Last year, they ran out of seed, this real seed catalog. They didn't have any more, any of these seeds. So, unfortunately, I didn't have last year any of this. So, um, I'm really happy this year I can have it. Now, now we come to the beans. Of course, I'm not going to grow much runner beans this year. I grow a few here and there. But this is a French bean, climb French bean. Probably nothing to do with the France, it's just looking like it. It's called Cherokee Trail of Tears. I f suppose it's uh, something to do with the, what is now called uh, uh, Cherokee Nation of North, Native North Americans. And probably this was one of the things that they could keep um, during their travel across the Americas when they were pushed away from their lands. As happens when you, when you welcome somebody with a gun and the guns gradually get pointed at you and you have to submit. Anyway, I'm diverging now. Submit to the will of them, just give up your land. 
that's what happened in there. That's what happened probably in Palestine. And uh, this is the logic of all the invasions. When you come with force, you don't come there to just be living in peace. You come to rule. That's the way Genghis Khan came. That's the way the Turks came to the Middle East. That's the way <laughs> people went to Australia, to America, or anywhere. Uh, yeah, Germans, or oh, name it, everywhere. That's the human nature. Anyway, that's a, that's a climbing being. I like tall climbing beings. I've grown a few kind of what you call climbing French beans varieties. They look like each other almost sometimes. So I like the taste of them, so I'm growing them again this year. And this is a dwarf French bean. I don't know why I ordered this. I don't like dwarf French beans. I probably I made a mistake. Uh, anyway, I, w I must chase this up to, to see why why this one is sent to me. I don't like dwarf beans. Simply because these dwarf beans are not for me. Uh, they're, they're too small. They would take care of space without actually giving much. So I don't go for them. Uh, I probably will return it. Yeah, the next uh, is my, oh, lovely, telephone, tall climbing pea. I don't like dwarf peas. Peas which are 90 centimeter tall, one meter tall, they're not for me. They take their space, they don't give you much crop. I want tall ones, and tall ones I can grow them on, over the tepi, as uh, our, our new friend has told, or wigwam, as they call, are called here in the UK. In England, um, they <clears throat> they can grow tall, and they give good uh, good crop over a long season. And uh, the longer, the better for me in my allotment. The taller, the better. And this is another variety of the uh, tall pea, Lord Leicester. And it's again another one of the heirlooms, so I can keep the seed of this also. And I'm looking forward to see how they do. I've already had a few from last year, so I'm going to plant them tomorrow. This is for another batch of that. I want to have more because the uh, succession, as they, as they call it, succession crop. So when it's ready, the other one is uh, growing gradually. So you will have a continuous supply of the thing, not just a, a glut. Okay, that is uh, another uh, soup pea, is Latvian, from Latvia, probably, Baltic state. Mm. Yeah, they are not, uh, they cannot, uh, eat, they're very starchy if you eat them dr um, fresh. So you have to keep them, and uh, dry them, and then put them in the soup. Uh, it's the first time I'm, I'm trying this, so I was, I'm, I'm looking forward to see how it is. It's again heirloom. All of these seeds are heirloom. And another variety, Champion of England. Oh, I like that. Tall climbing pea. I think I had a few planted of this this year, and I've sown them, I mean. I'm going to plant them probably tomorrow. We'll see how, we, how, how I'm doing, if I'm right. right. Um, I bought this again just to have more seeds if I want to have a succession of this. Then, uh, that's again, that's the dwarf French beans. I don't like dwarf French beans. Now this year, I'm trying something new. I thought that, okay, it's good to try something new, give myself a treat. And uh, this year I'm trying the oka. This is like potato. The, in the South America, they grow it along the potatoes. Uh, exactly the same way that you grow a potato. But uh, as I have seen some videos in the YouTube, they taste somehow like a carrot. Uh, it's a kind of posh, fancy crop. They don't grow very big. And uh, as I understood, they have different colors. So I have bought a few of them. Oh, look at them. It's the first time I've seen this. Look. They, are, they have the sprouts, uh, like what the uh, potatoes have. And they are in different colors. So, we will see how they look there. Must be very careful they don't break because these are the growing tips. So, there is more here inside there. I just ordered a mix of them. So, this mix, I think the mix cost me about 10 pounds. So, yeah, as a first timer, I'm just growing something new this year. Let's see how it is. 
that's all the seeds that I have now ordered and I've received it and uh, God willing when I sow them I will have a good crop of them I will of course try to give an update on how they are doing Tell my son their sweet potato is a kind of winter squash it's not sweet potato it's beautiful it's shaped like a heart beautifully shaped like a heart when you cut it you see it's a heart typical still ice heart of course and uh, it has grooves in it, it's beautiful. It's, a, it's one of the most beautiful uh, wi squashes, winter squashes I've ever seen. It's small, it's not very big. Probably uh, at the most 15 to 20 centimeter, one, uh, half a kilo to one kilo at the most. But it's beautiful, you can give it as a gift to anyone. And you can eat it, it's delicious. Better than the butternut squash. Now I'm going to sow some of the seeds of it. I bought the seeds from the Real Seeds catalog. You can read about it in their website. You can also go to uh, the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company in America. They have uh, all the information that you can find also in the book of the complete pumpkin there about this variety. And these are the seeds that, uh, as they look. Yeah, and my hand is really dry now after working all the day. Uh, here, uh, also soils. Anyway, and uh, now look at this, and then we go now for the planting of it. Uh, just as as usual, like any other uh, squash or any other kind of seed like this, you just put them on their uh, standing side. And the thin part of it so it's easy for the plant to actually lift it up root goes down for the dust stardust as we call it this is all organic matter stardust anything soil is a stardust then they're sending the solar panels up for this is star which gives energy to everything solar panels here are a metaphor for the leaves that's practically solar panels beautiful world This is my three sister system, or actually five sister system. 
uh, sun came briefly so I just thought that is a good time to actually take a picture and make a video as you see these are the plants a little bit of rain makes a big difference the plants absorb the moisture immediately so the soil is dry also the wind was blowing so it helped also the moisture to be absorbed better Sweet cones are gradually getting ready. Look at the tassels, the change in color, they were green. And look at the silks in the center of the picture. They are turning completely to brown. So when they are brown, completed, they may be are ready to eat. So what I will do, I will remove some of those uh, husks around them just to open and see how, is the, how it is. Probably in one week time. At the moment, the silk is brown. The tassels are almost a straw yellow. And this is my first batch, so ready for harvest probably in one week. I will start to harvest gradually because I don't want to like last year. <laughs> Squirrels have it first. And look what I have found. I'm seeing somewhere here something like a 
خام کینو Pumpkins are everywhere now. Even uh, near the top of the sweet corns. Of course, I have them here also. And that is the best way actually when they're hanging. They don't get damaged by anything. They don't get deformed by laying on the ground. But they want their own weight to be deformed. So, probably that's the nicest thing. Let them go over the Wigwams. I saw it in the Walmer castle, and after that, I just let the let the pumpkins also go over the over the wigwams. <coughs> This one has grown so much since the last time I filmed it. It's almost now touching the ground. Yeah. Just two inches above the ground. And there is a neighbor of it just there beyond. Looking good. Another fine specimen of the pumpkin that I mentioned. I just discovered it now. I thought that this pumpkin plant gives only one per wine. But now this is the second one. It's called, in some catalogues and books about pumpkins, the most beautiful pumpkin in the world. We will see. I have now two of it. This is a pumpkin that uh, some people have claimed that this is the most beautiful pumpkin in the world. Oh, mm. Can we tell that safely? I don't know. We will wait for that. At the moment, it looks like this. And I will keep watching it until the harvest time. And then I heard it's a very long keeper. We will see how it is. Can you guess the name? If you can guess the name, please write in the comments below. Today is Saturday, um, 15 of the August 2015. This side of the sky is cloudy. That side is beautiful and cloud free. Or oh, how do we just clouds? But what I'm going to talk about is not the clouds, it's the three sister system. And the result that is gradually coming up. And for me, the best measure of the success is growing one of these beauties. This is a pumpkin. I've grown many varieties of pumpkin this year. I don't label them usually, because in the allotment, <laughs> we have thieves, unfortunately people who don't care about the others and so I just don't label them practically so it's better to just I know what it is when it is ripened and uh, this is one of them it can be one of these Halloween pumpkins probably even the one that I bought from Marshalls the seeds of it 
but we will not know until it is ripe. And there is another sister of it down there. If you look carefully. Growing in solitude. And uh, yes, try to get a better view of that. This is the three sister system. I like it. I like it to be like that, compact. <laughs> it's like a surprise before me. Okay, I, of course I will harvest the uh, sweet corns, hopefully before the squirrels find in them or rats eat them. But uh, in the autumn, October, November, when everything has gone brown and dead, and I just go and see and look at the most beautiful harvest, most beautiful epilogue for the season, and that is looking for pumpkins and winter squashes. That's the delight of the allotment organic life. Sunday, second day of the November 2014, pumpkin variety Iran, and I'm going to harvest it now. It's one of the largest pumpkins I've ever grown, and this is the texture of it. As the book says, the complete pumpkin. This is a long keeping pumpkin. Uh, the Turks are coming. They let the refugees from Syria and Iraq directed them toward the Europe asking them, giving facilities to them, the same way that they direct all the terrorists in the world to go to Syria because they want to take over the whole Syria and the Middle East. Now you see the Turks have taken over in our allotment, in Europe. The Turks are coming back. When I told you Turks are coming back, you don't believe me. <laughs> Look at it. Turbans of the Turks already in England. They are clever. When the United States and UK asked the Turkey just to play their role in fighting the ISIS terrorists, which the godfather of them is actually Turkey, they hesitantly tried to avoid it, but under the public opinion pressure after the death of tens of Britons in Tunisia under attack by the Turkish-backed terrorist ISIS, people thought that, oh, who is benefiting from that? The terrorists attacked the Mediterranean resorts where the Western tourists are going. So where they go next? They go to Turkey. In Tunisia this happened, in Egypt this happened, in Libya it happened, in Algeria, in Morocco. So all the fingers were pointing to Turkey. As the Sherlock Holmes says, Watson, follow the money. 
So, Turkey had to hesitantly agree with that, but at the same time they started to attack the Kurds, which were fighting the ISIS. When they were confronted, why well, you are doing that? They came up with a, another brilliant idea to put pressure on Europe. What was that? They facilitated the transfer of the refugees through their territory toward the Greek island of Kos, where practically they were in Europe. Turkey is not accepted in Europe for obvious reasons, backing terrorism, being Islamist and other things. What happened is that now <laughs> They have put pressures by hundreds of thousands of terrorists and potential terrorists, I'm telling you, refugees you can call them. Who knows who is among them? Flooding the Europe. The Turk turbans already appeared in the European soil. This is one of the earliest uh, pumpkins that every year reliably crops well. It's called Uchiki Kuri or orange pumpkin. It's a Japanese pumpkin. And uh, as you see, it looks orange. If you keep this specimen long enough, it gets red. This is a slightly different variety of that Uchiki Kuri. It's called red curry. And uh, it's quite delicious. It has big seeds inside it. You can use it as a snack, roast it and salt it and eat. And uh, it keeps well. I had it uh, up to April last year. And it's the uh, second year I'm growing this and it's really good. It's beautiful. It's shapely. And uh, it's small enough to be finished before getting mold in the fridge. So that's quite a nice size pumpkin. Anything bigger than this is a little bit difficult to use it if you are not big eaters of pumpkin. And today is the second of the, or no, third of the October. This is the pumpkin that I have here. I will show you around the shape of it. So take a good look. <laughs> so it's kind of oblong. And you can tell me now what it resembles. Yeah, you know what it resembles now? Yeah, that's it. You're right. Yeah, you got it. Winter squash variety, Kadu um, Polo. This is from Tajikistan. And uh, beautiful. They eat it with rice, mix it, chop it, and then um, dice probably into shape, shape like dice, and then. Uh, eating with the... Okay, this is a video about the winter squash, the variety of Boston. As you see, it's the first year that we have planted this. Uh, the seed was bought from the Real Seed Catalog, which is an organic heirloom seed company in the UK. And this is the first time that we have And I'm really impressed. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'd like to come out with the 
beautiful. Size of it. I have to put something under it to prevent it from being rotten by the rain and the Beautiful plant. Guess what? We had last night lightning and now we have a lightning F1 winter squash. That's the plant. And these are the They're kind of similar to acorn squashes, but with this kind of stripy texture. Spaghetti squash, the variety's name is uh, Stripetti F1. It's a good sized spaghetti squash. When it is ripe, it grows a uh, red texture, uh, sorry, yellow texture with green stripes and some dots of the green all around. And it has one plant gives about three foots. I'm looking forward to eat this one. Instead of a spaghetti. And that will be in after the harvest. It's pumpkin. Jacob, can you put your hand there? To think how big it has become. It's, it's ripening instead of getting any bigger, it seems to me. Yeah, I think. It's changing color to orange. And I see there is another one there. And okay. there is third one there. And there are a few yes. ones there which they may not grow any bigger than that because the season is really running short. And beside the watering, Jacob, and uh, putting it on a compost heap for the food and drainage, yes. uh, does the actual seed that you use has any effect on the quality? So you must have a seed from a pumpkin which was giant. Yeah. Okay. That is a different variety That's of a course. Different variety, yeah. That is almost now 60 centimeters. Yeah. Huge. And you can see the marking of the leaves. It's so yeah. delicate that the markings, the leaf has rubbed here and left the marking there. That's true. Beautiful. Rip that drip. Amazing. Yeah. Jacob and son continuing to grow pumpkins in the UK. Update on the Jacob's pumpkin from Kerala, but he, now he lives in the England. Yes, can you come and uh, show us how is your pumpkin now? Is it? Yeah. Last time we said it's around 60 centimeter, now it's. Ah, amazing. Put your hand on it just for the scale. That's it. That's the size. It's about 90 centimeter, right? 90 centimeter now. Yeah, good. That's amazing. Let us show. You should give me one seed of this giant pumpkin so I can grow it through. Of course, I will. Brilliant. Yeah. So, maybe just for the sake of information, ask you to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Jacob. I'm from South India. Yeah. Um, Kerala. Brilliant. Yeah. And uh, what you have put under this pumpkin that it is not uh, no, rotting? Actually, this is I grown from the combos. Combos is underneath. Ah. So, this will let the water go and. From back. Yeah, from that's it. That's great. Let us see if your dripping system is yet working. Yeah. 
Mm. It was here the other time, but yeah. I suppose that the tank is there, so that is working. Amazing. If anybody wants to grow a giant pumpkin, what they should do? Just simple. Pumpkin needs more water. Oh. Uh, more than any place or, or any compost. Water is important for pumpkin. It's In my experience, I know that. Yes. That's brilliant. Jacob the pumpkin man. <laughs> Amazing. Let us zoom to the tree. And to your face. Big happy smile of a farmer. This is a giant pumpkin. Put your hand on it, please. Ooh. Can you put it on, on the pumpkin? Aha, that's the size. I can say this is about 60 centimeters. Mm. And why this is growing? Because this gentleman is very crafty and industrious. What he has done, you see this drip of water here? It's always there. <laughs> and this is connected to this water tank. Yeah. <laughs> so 24 hours a day, this pumpkin is being fed. Practically, most of it is water then. <laughs> that is amazing. And let us see the gardener who has done this big achievement. He's called Joseph? Jacob. Oh, Jacob. Jacob. And he's originally from Goa. Kerala. Kerala. Is it from Kerala, not Goa? Not Goa. Okay, amazing. Joseph, you have done well. God bless you. Another variety of giant pumpkin that Jacob is growing. He's uh, from South uh, India in Kerala. Uh, and that's his allotment pumpkin in UK. Look at it, it's beautiful. This one is a little bit paler and is about uh, more than half a meter probably 60 centimeter now and is it growing and the secret as Jacob says is to add water okay we are here again with Jacob's baby is a beautiful pumpkin that he has actually not just one baby it's more than one there is another one white one there Hi. Yeah, it's turning now to a kind of salmon beige color with a little bit, yeah, warty surface. It's turning beautiful, really. And this is Jacob. Jacob, uh, do you want to cover them now because of the frost? Yeah, because already frost. Oh, yeah, the plant has suffered, as you yeah, see. Yeah. yeah. Just covering the pumpkin, just to be sure that it will not get damaged anymore. So, um, go ahead and cover it, Jacob. Now, pumpkin covered. Can go. <laughs> oh, that's that's too big. That baby has grown very bigger than your packs. Yeah, you can cover the other ones. Yeah. Removing the moisture so it will not uh, get moldy. Like a person, should be covered with a jacket.
beautiful. And the third one. Okay, that can't cover it with it. That can't cover it. Yeah, now we have a pumpkin who is a hoodie. Third one. Yeah, we had a one night of frost. The temperature fell to four degrees. It damaged some of the pumpkins and the, the leaves mainly. Um, one of my little pumpkins also was damaged, but it was a little one. As big as this one. This big one seems that they store the heat yes, somehow. So they don't suffer so much as yeah. the little ones. I like to remove it in the morning. Yeah, beautiful. There's no frost. Yeah, there is no frost tonight. I think that will be 10, 11, 10, 11. degrees. So that is above the Freezing point. Yeah. It's not just a frost. When the sun rises, the water expands. And the expenditure of the water will cause the tissues of this, the cells of these plants just burst. And that is what we see here. Like this one. The cell structure has been damaged. They cannot do photosynthesis anymore. They're not green. Brilliant. Pumpkins covered. Are you going to cover this one also? Yeah. You have enough cover. Oh, your dripping system. Even in the rain it works. Oh, these are... These are, yeah, marrow. This way they are coming. So you can use any of those, yeah. probably. They are rubbish, huh? You cannot use them. Or you can turn the edge of this over it. Yeah, this part of it. Uh -huh, that's right. Harvesting something that uh, is is known as Turk turban, but having harvested a few of the other variety, other samples of these specimens of this, I think that it should be called with a different name, and I will tell you what name. Just let me. <laughs> I like that name. <laughs> it represents more of the Turks than anything else. <laughs> okay, looking at this. The appropriate name for this is not Turk's turban. You can call it Turk turban, but the better name is Turk's bottom. <laughs> Turk's bottom. Susan, hold it. <laughs> Let me just take a little video of that. What you are doing? Uh -huh. That's exactly Turk's bottom, Turk's arse. <laughs> Little pumpkin for our soup tonight. So, just getting this small, one of the smaller ones. They're so tough. They're tough. <laughs> Have you got scissors or little suits or something? Um, okay, because we don't want much uh, a big pumpkin, we just take the smallest one of the Ochikikuri ones. For dinner tonight, soup. It's very tough. 
bring this. <laughs> Let me go and bring the scissor. <laughs> this is like another video. Okay, Suzanne, now you have the scissor. <laughs> I have to go to the shed and bring the scissor. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's enough for one soup. For two people. Yeah, lovely. Look at that. That's for tonight. We are two only. We can eat this one. Yum, yum. This is called Ochikikori, by the way. Harvest of the 2014 of uh, acorn squashes, lightning and uh, celebration with a beautiful mutation. Okay, these are the tape of the tapes of the pumpkins or winter squash and summer squash that I've grown this year. Uh, I'm I'm not just after uh, eating them. I want because we have to live with them for a long period of time, several months, sometimes a year. This one is from last year. is a Turk turban, and uh, is now November fourth, and yet it is here. We can use it. It's uh, absolutely healthy and edible. So I'm going for kind of pumpkins and summer squashes that have a beauty beside uh, being edible. This is a summer squash, scallop varieties. As you can see, they look different. They're kind of decorative when we have it in the windowsill for curing and storage. They look beautiful. Also, these ones, these ones. This is a winter squash, of course. This is summer squash. And uh, all these kind of butternut squashes, we have used several of them already. Uh, I, I grow them because they are edible. At the same time, they are beautiful. Look at this little one. Beautiful. Look at this prince, crown prince. Beautiful. And uh, this is the harvest of our pumpkins and summer squashes for this year. This one can be used as like courgette. Tastes like that also. But has a very hardy skin that can last long. This is the pumpkin variety Iran. I bought it from the Baker Creek uh, seeds in the America. Uh, as the story says, the, the seed was obtained in 1948 from a town in Iran called Torbat Heydariye. And uh, the, the book which is called Complete Pumpkin claims that this is the most beautiful pumpkin in the world. Um, judging by what other pumpkins I have, in this size range I think that can be true. And uh, Actually, it is a long keeper. I had it here since September. And now it is 27th of January. September, October, November, December. And uh, yeah, December, January. Five months it is now. And there are claims on the internet that this has kept on to June. I'm looking to see how, how long I can keep this one. Okay, today is the 18th of the November. I had a lot of uh, varieties of the pumpkin cultivated, like last year, this year also. Uh, probably the same number of varieties or even more. This is called Honey Bear. I'm going to have it for the pumpkin soup tonight. But let me go and show you the other pumpkins that I have. I've given up a lot of them 
given to our friends and uh, uh, just to share the pleasure of uh, growing something. And uh, people love it when I give them this kind of different pumpkins. I will show you a few that I have. Okay, this is one of those pumpkins that uh, um, I think I bought the seeds from the Frenchies or seeds of Italy uh, from uh, Wisley Horticulture, uh, RHS Horticulture Society, Rural Horticulture Society, place. or from the, another local nursery. I don't remember. Exactly. I don't remember the name of it. I just grow it and I, I don't label any more things because I know what they are. This is pumpkin. That's pumpkin for me. It's a different shape. <laughs> That's the only difference. Okay, these are more varieties of pumpkins that I've grown this year. Uh, many of them are from, some of them are from Marshalls. I think this one is from Marshalls or from the Frenchie again. This is from the Frenchie. Uh, this one from was from Marshall. They call it a... Uh, uh, Pumpkin squash or squash pumpkin, something like that. Uh, I suppose I, I was waiting to see a little bigger than this, but it didn't grow. Uh, this one I had double this size, given to John or allotment su supervisor. Uh, another, the same size like that other one, I had it, I gave it to a friend in the farm uh, for the kids to carve. Uh, I had another one, big one, which was like a boob, and I made a video about that. I also passed it to a friend in the farm. We get our chickens and other things there. We are, we are, they are nice to us. So. Uh, this is a Torben, Torx Torben, or Torx Bum, as I <laughs> jokingly call it. These are all other varieties that I also purchased the seeds. I think from the seeds of Italy or something. This is also, again, seeds of distinction, I think, yeah. Uh, more varieties here. This is the uh, Moscow de Provence. Uh, this year, uh, it was a little bit late when I planted this variety. Well, it gave me again one pumpkin. That's all right. It goes a uh, kind of golden brown color over time. At the moment, it's green. This is, as usual, the old faithful Ochikikuri. I have a few of these potty pans, and uh, this is the spaghetti squash. I'm not sure about this. It must be. It's not uh, it's not uh, um, Ochikikuri, it's a little bit bigger than that. I think it's one of those Frenchy ones again, uh, Seeds of Italy. So I have a few here. Again, another Turk turban and another one of these uh, blue blue squash or something like that anyway. Hobart or Anashuar, so Hobart, something like that. I forgot the name, sorry. Uh, it's pumpkin. It's a winter squash. I will eat it. So that's what, what is important. Uh, I love pumpkins. I love to grow them. I grow them a lot. The bigger ones, I cannot keep them because windows, is, you see how little this is. So the bigger ones goes usually to our friends. Okay, now we come back again to the honey bear. Honey bear actually was good. It gave me, yeah, probably five or six fruits. And uh, uh, we have a few of them, some of the other ones, but we passed to others other people, friends, and uh, yeah, sharing and enjoying the pumpkin. This is enough for, for us for, for a meal tonight. Pumpkin soup, ingredients including pumpkin and other things that vegetables that we have from our own allotment, of course, most of them. This is the winter squash uh, or pumpkin variety Iran. It's the second year that now we have it. We, 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 I've, I sown the seed of this in uh, I think February or March 2014 and now here now we are 19 of April 2015 it's the second year of the life of the plant and the fruit of it in this way and yet the fruit which is among the largest fruits of any any kind of fruit any plant is yet going on it's amazing. Just a few pumpkins also. Winter squashes have remained. Festival is called. From last year also. We have given some to our friends. Some eaten. And yet these are the specimens. Survived. Iran is a wonderful variety of pumpkin it seems. First of all it's beautiful. <laughs> then. Yeah. When the times, the times comes. I just may. Open it and see how it is. It's a wonderful pumpkin. It's 
naturally full of beauty. Wow. It looks amazing, interesting. I'm taking a few photos also. Interesting. The Christmas day, we want to also use one of our pumpkins to make a, to include it in our Christmas dinner. Susan, do you want to choose one pumpkin? Yes, I'm having this one. Why this one? Can I just show you other ones that you can take a look? You don't like those big ones? No, big that would be too big, big because we... One, this one. Let's just dust this here. Yeah. Honey bear. Turk turban. This, this. You want this one? What you I think this one because they're the sweetest. And it'll what you be... kikuri, huh? That's yeah. the best one. We always you grow it and it's ready always in August. <laughs> That's the sweetest one. Yeah, um, most it, reliable one. Yeah, it's it's easiest to cook with a, a dinner, and it doesn't need to be spiced up or anything. So. Mm -hmm. This one it is. Beautiful. Can I see the bottom of it? Butchikikuri, Japanese onion, as they call it in Japanese. That's the meaning of the word uchikikuri. It's the best pumpkin you can have. You can grow. Easy to grow, August will be ready, and it keeps it up to December now. You can keep it up to May, if you like. Okay, this is a Mosquito Province pumpkin. It's a very good pumpkin. When you uh, take it, it's almost green. It gradually turns this copper brown color. It's a small one. You grow usually bigger, double the size or triple the size. This is for this year's crop. And uh, about the seed, I think, from the real seed catalog. So that's a that's, uh, pumpkin. And I'm going now with winter squash or pumpkin. And I'm going now to cut it because we want to eat it. It's uh, Sunday, 10th of the April, 2016. Uh, harvested probably October, September, October. Yeah, October. And uh, now we are going to have it. Okay, I use a bread knife for this, and uh, as you see, it's cutting through. Bread knife is safer if you not cut unless you sew with a sew movement. And uh, yeah, that's the way Mosquito Province. Uh, my wife wanted to boil it the way that uh, they do, but uh, we didn't have the big pottery available now. We are making yogurt in it, so <laughs> so I'm lucky. I can use the seeds. The seeds are available. So Moscato Province is one of the best, sweetest uh, pumpkins you can grow. A seed, uh, real seed catalog. Uh, it's a heirloom variety. And I think this is actually from the Middle East. But this is what we call as a, in Persia, they call it as Iran. They call it a turban. It looks a bit like a turban. Not a Turk's turban. Turk's turban is different. This is a turban, what we call turban. It's very sweet. We will see how it is. Okay, now I've emptied the seed cavity. The seeds are here. I will add a little bit of water. Then with the pulp, I will separate the seeds from the pulp. And this is a pumpkin itself. It's quite juicy for a pumpkin that is uh, almost now, yeah, for, uh, about six months old at least, from the harvest time and from the inception time, that when you uh, sow the seed, March 2015, is uh, 12, more than one year old. It's quite juicy. Look, even you can see some juices standing there. A little pot, puddle. Anyway, quite juicy and uh, quite seedy. Not much seed actually, I must say. <laughs> it's really good. I'm looking forward to this. It must be very sweet. I like it. Unlike the pumpkins that you use in the Halloween, these are good pumpkins. They last. 
Okay, I have now separated the pulp from the seeds. These seeds go in another, in another um, saucer to dry. It's almost the time for planting, so I'll just probably replant. We sow them. Hmm. Okay, they say that uh, don't uh, plant the seed from the pumpkin that you have not separated it for, from prevented from uh, cross pollination and such things. If it was so, why in the past? Uh, uh, I mean, this is a very ancient. It's from Middle East, probably 800 years old. Uh, the history of it in the Europe during the Crusades, probably they brought the seed. And uh, it has been grown since then, all the time like this, without anything. Just every year, seed after seed, they were planting it. So why we don't have any anything uh, worse than what it is? <sighs> I think seed companies, one, actually, you don't buy it. Uh, you, you don't grow your own, you just buy from them. This is a heirloom company, real seed catalog. And they say, keep it. But they say, do it like that, separate them. But don't let them cross-pollinate with other flowers, select the flower, then the then pollinate it, then close it, isolate it, then when the pumpkin comes, that pumpkin is the one that you can take to see. Mm, I will try now this year, just without any, any of this hassle, to see if I can get a good crop. I may mean not, but uh, I may also. You will see. Okay, now I've cut the pumpkin and I'm putting it, uh, I added some seasoning, general purpose seasoning. And, uh, I just want to eat it, I don't use it in a soup or anything. This is the seasoning I'm using. And all purpose savory seasoning. I'm putting it now in the oven and I will not show the result because I'm too tired and <laughs> I just eat it later. This video is just for showing the pumpkin, Moscow the province. Okay, we have lots of pumpkins from the allotment. Um, but this pumpkin is from the allotment. I just had enough space in the home, in the windowsill. So I put them in the plastic box that we had just outside, in the open, in the allotment, beside the polytunnel, not inside it even, outside. I left it there and I was thinking that probably it will rot. I put, I have several there and this is one of them. Now I came and I saw that this is fresh, as new. I washed it, now I'm going to cut it and eat. Okay, now I'm cutting the pumpkin. It's quite actually soft. So it either had the time to actually to cure itself, getting hard the skin outside. Okay, this was, I cut it now. And now remember, this is one of those uh, pumpkins that, have, that we grow for the first time. That they call it <laughs> for, for Halloween, they use it for Halloween. You see the amount of the seeds and the, the little amount of the skin it has, the flesh actually. So that is it, but it has lasted. This is now today is the 17th of January, 2016, and we harvested. Halloween was in the October, November, when it was quite uh, late it has survived. Just in a plastic, <laughs> you don't expect it to survive actually in plastic because of the sweating and then, a bit moisture than they will molt. Yeah. It, will, it will be covered in mold. So. It's not moldy, it's just a slightly here. So I'm going now to see how it's inside. Okay, um, now I have actually um, spooned it out. This is the pith with the seeds. It's one of those uh, rubbish. Uh, um, Spoons that you use. So, I don't want to use my good spoons for this kind of job. Anyway, now this is the pith, and that's the rest of it is the flesh. And it don't look bad. Actually, it looks nice. I'm going to eat it. 
Okay, now I've cut it into pieces. I want to roast it probably. But wait, these are the pieces. This is a tray I'm going to put the pumpkins in it. Just an ex experiment. See how, if I can roast it. Okay, now I have uh, foiled the bottom of this. Put the lay down the... <laughs> and now we season it. The pumpkins. It is 17th of January, we have pumpkin. <laughs> Chris, this is a Halloween pumpkin. <laughs> Some sugar will be nice, huh, to add this. Yeah, a dash of oil also. Oh, looks yummy. Okay, now the sugar. The mara sugar, I'm brown sugar. No. no. Demerara, dark. Yeah, Demerara, huh? Yeah. Dark sugar, brown yeah. sugar. That's the uh, sugar which is not whitened by using phosphorus and other things. Cane sugar. Yeah, that's a plain cane sugar. It's more healthy. I heard from many people, uh, traditional medicine practitioners, they were telling me. Okay, that looks better. Just hold on, hold on. Which gas number you're putting? It's about 45 minutes. Okay, 45 minutes. So I'll just set it up 45. Mm -hmm. Can I put this in the thing? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. no I want I'll to have some seeds. Well, some of it's in. Which one are you doing with it? Okay, no. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Six varieties of squashes. Squash Orange Queen. Squash Celebration. Squash win Winter Squash Variety Iran. Squash Spaghetti Three Petty F1. Squash Scallop Twinkle F1. And White Scallop or Potty Pan Squash. Now in the Vadestan uh, garden and manor, Kate Malone, eh? or Kate Malone, she's an artist making pottery or chinaware and glaze them. And she's crazy for pumpkins. And as you know, I'm also crazy for pumpkins. Let us see what she has made. Look at this. This is a big uh, kind of like a kind of butternut squash style, but not exactly butternut squash. This, oh no, don't touch, do not touch. This is another one which is the Turk turban. All kind of fruits. This one is Moscow the province. I know that. And that one is also another one. Oh God, this all putty. This is scallop, courgette. And of course these are small uh, butternut squash and corn and some chili. That is a giant, beautiful Mosquito province. That's one of the longest lasting pumpkins you can find, you can grow. Of course, this is made of the pottery or china. Beautiful glaze on it. Oh God, this lady likes the Mosquito province. Another Mosquito province with the paintings on it. Really beautiful, I never saw anything like that before. Oh, of course, these are the Middle Eastern ones. We call them Kedu Halwai, um, sweet pumpkin. A pastry pumpkin. And more and more pumpkins, oh God. Look at this, all kind of, of course, these are summer squash, some of them. This is summer squash, it's cut up. And this is the, God, I forgot. Oh, anyway. 
you can. <laughs> Do you remember the name? Melon. That? That's not melon. That's a pumpkin. Two pieces. Yeah. That's a blue hobart. Oh, I can't think now. These are kind of pumpkin, summer squash. Pumpkin, yeah. yeah pumpkin, pumpkin. Pumpkin, yeah. pumpkin uh, special uh, sort okay, of yeah, pumpkin. pumpkin. Where, where are you from, may I just ask? Switzerland. Switzerland. Oh, you're welcome here. Yeah, <laughs> Germany. Do you grow also pumpkin there? Yeah, I do. Oh, yes, we have oh. very big ones. Yeah. <laughs> I grow it myself. That's the reason I'm really excited to see this lady. And this is so much interested in the, the art of pumpkin. The inspiration came oh, from wow. the garden here. Really? That's where she went to see because they grow in the garden. Can we see the garden? No, Actual that's garden. Private. Private. Oh. She was here many weeks to look at all what the objects. And then she got the idea and created yeah. it. Like she should that. come to my allotment because I grow all kinds of varieties. Many of these things are familiar to me because I grow them. That is Uchiki Kuri, for example. Uh, is it's <laughs> it's a Japanese pumpkin. It's, uh, uchiki Kuri oh, means the orange, no, orange uchiki. onion in ah. Japanese. <laughs> it's because it's orange. Of course, she, in an artistic license, she just colors them the yeah. colors that she wants. So. All the, all the shapes and come from, from what's and what she's seen. Yes. There is a book called Complete Pumpkin. It has all kind of pumpkins that you can find. It's an expensive book, of course, but I've managed to buy it. It's, uh, if you want to buy it now, 120 pounds is that book just. <laughs> but there is no pumpkin that you, you, you may find anywhere that is not mentioned in that book. Beautiful photographs of it Lovely and everything. Lovely oh, I love it. It's the best thing you can have, the best lasting vegetable that you can keep in your own home. But they say, from October until March yeah. in, in my cellar, yes. I have some. Yeah. And I can use it. I have now even some pumpkin in my home, in the windowsill. I'll tell you which one is this. Um, Turk turban. That lasts a long time. Very yeah, long. it's it's yes. a it's an amazing thing. You can keep it, and any time you want, it's just fresh. Because the skin gets dry, but inside of it is moist. It's okay. and Yeah, it's all right. You can so, eat do it. you enjoy the whole exhibition? Do you like I really it? love this. I wish yeah. that uh, the lady was here also, and uh, yeah, we could share her. my videos about the pumpkins. I have. I have met the lady. <laughs> you have you? I came to a lecture when oh. she opened. Yeah. I may sh actually try after this. I try to she show you some of my. She's there. She's is she? Right there. there she is. Oh, that's, that's there. Oh. You can go and watch it, yeah. Well, that's that's interesting. Malone sounds Italian. Italian. All kind of beautiful pumpkin. Yeah. Oof, look at this. I think this lady is fascinated by the Moscow de Province pumpkin. This is, this is, you repeat. She repeating it here, there, another one. These are the same variety of pumpkin. It's a French pumpkin. Interesting. <laughs> Joint pumpkin. Okay. I wish this was mine. That is beautiful. Take a picture of it. And this is the heaven for pottery pumpkins. Oh, this is the artist. Kate Malone, or Malone. She looks a slightly Italian. It's lovely art. Oh, all kind of stems of the pumpkins. That's actually a good idea. I should separate mine also, keep them. They are beautiful items. A little video about her making her work. She's quite ancient like me, must be around 55.
that is also jasmine. Oh, this is the almond cake. This is supposed to be a bank holiday. This is a garden center. Mm -hmm.